It's a pigeon paradise and Ollie Williams is well out of his comfort zone. He's left Bobmin in Cornwall for Bloemfontein in South Africa for a week's hunting. This morning it's a sunflower and maize crop protection job. The only way it was like a British Pigeon Day is the fact that the birds look similar in the air in terms of the shape. Jamming up, it's getting warm. They're like wood pigeons on steroids. As soon as you pop up, you know, like a wood pigeon would see you and change direction. These things change direction and either fly directly at you or supersonic the wrong way or, and they're incredibly agile, which makes for incredibly testing shooting, but also you've got to be very careful because a, a safe bird can very quickly become a dangerous bird. It was purely on flight lines. Any pigeon shooting I've ever done has always been in the UK and we've always ended up spending a meticulous amount of time setting out the decoys, building a beautiful hide and then firing about three cartridges. See that's just that's out of range. The numbers were much bigger. I mean, certainly in Cornwall, you don't get any, any pigeons at all, really. So I've shot more pigeons over, over the last couple of days than I've ever shot in my entire life. Over the past two decades, crop protection has become more important in this region as the pigeon and dove numbers have boomed. They can strip acres of seeds in just a few sittings. They, they nest in the cities. The human beings have developed the perfect environment for them where they've got nooks and crannies in the cities to, to nest in. And then basically feasts in terms of sunflower seeds and maize all around the city. So it's the perfect storm for a, a population boom, which is what they've, they've now got here. They fly out the cities with the doves and then come in on the sunflower seeds, which there are thousands and thousands of acres of, and, and also the maize. There were a few areas where fresh sowing had, had to be re-drilled because as the, as the, you know, I think it was about 100 acres at one point, the doves had just come in and mob-handed and just completely cleared all the, um, the drilling out and the farmers had to reseed it. The rock pigeons used to be quite rare and people were from, you know, you shouldn't really shoot at them or shouldn't shoot them. And that was only 20 years ago. And they're now quite literally probably millions of them. And they've got a real problem around here. These don't look like traditional British woodies. We were shooting rock pigeons and we were shooting doves of, I think they've got three species of doves. There's a collared uh, turtle and there's another one which is tiny. When as soon as I turned around and said the doves were protected in the UK, the PH was with me actually burst out laughing because the numbers they have here. So that I'll finish great. that sentence for him. Numerous. What else is flying? The doves were probably as good, if not better, than the pigeons in terms of they were just coming on a steady line. You had every kind of bird, at every height you could properly shoot at, which was great for my shooting skills in terms of honing them, but awful for my shoulder. My pH was loading for me, basically. Um, How did you get on with it? Very well. No, a young, young guy, um, a Gideon, he was a you know, really, really, really nice chap. So um, I think he's used to clients that haven't shot birds before, because I think he was quite impressed by, and said, wow, you're English, you're very good at shooting birds. So. I think he's blowing my ego, to be honest with you, so I, I, he's, very, he's going to get a good tip at the end of the day. That's the most important thing. He was just sort of passing the cartridges <laughs> as opposed to actually loading your gun. I'd like to come back with a pair and a loader. That would be, that would be quite special. A gun's a gun, and as long as it puts the birds on the floor, that's the most important thing. So, having never shot a semi-auto before, Ollie's count is pretty good. First, I'd say 100 cartridges. It took me a while to get onto them. But when I was on them, I, even though I say so myself, I shot rather well. <laughs> And miles away, we? I was probably probably lurking around the one in two and a half. Okay, five to one, well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Generous. We walked into a sunflower field and said, yeah, this will do. Stand here. And it was basically, as he was putting me out, there were birds flying all over the place. And I was using a semi-auto, which I haven't really used properly before. So that was a learning curve of loading that and how that works. And it was just fast and furious, red hot barrels from, or barrel. Uh, from the start. That went on for about two hours and then that line started to sort of slow down as they moved and then we moved to a, well we had, the chap said we had to wait until the school we were going to shoot beside broke up for the day. So when the kids had all gone home and we were literally stood beside the, um, the playground and in a line and the doves were coming down the line of the, the hedge and then we shot till dusk or until our shoulders were too sore to carry on. As with most African shooting, nothing goes to waste here. All of the doves, and this is a fantastic part, there is literally a queue of people behind your peg, locals, and the, the, the picker-uppers or the, the, the guys who you know, pick up for you, they have huge bags full of the doves, and they line them all out for the photograph for the, for the hunters, and then literally give all of them to the locals. Yeah, if, if, you, if you do get a chance, it's not quite as far as Argentina, and the flights aren't really expensive at all. It's 
Bloemfontein's an easy hop from Johannesburg. If you get a chance to come down here, we, we fancy a little trip. Definitely give them a give them a look because it's it's well worth it. Well worth it. Now some thanks. Thanks to Ely Cartridges. It turns out they work in Africa as well as the UK. Thanks also to Gideon and Kotoko Hunting for hosting the day. And thanks to our camera person on the day, Kayla van Furen, who does the filming for Northern Cape Professional Hunters School. There's links to all of them in the description below.